we continue our study of verses 14 to 18, our focus today is on verse 17 and the new things that Paul will show us there and how they fit into his ongoing argument for the righteousness of God. Father, we want to honor your righteousness. We want to exalt your glory, your name, your freedom in accord with what is taught in this text. So bring our minds into conformity with the deep things that are being shown about yourself here, I pray through Christ. Amen. So let's read it and get it up to speed here, and then we'll look at verse 17. What should we say then? Is there an injustice? And I've I've been translating that um, unrighteousness. They're the same word in Greek. Sometimes justice, sometimes righteous is the better translation. Is there then unrighteousness on God's part? No, there isn't, by no means. First argument, because, for, he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. So then, an inference drawn from that Old Testament quote from from Exodus 33, 19. So then, it depends not on human will, or human exertion. So this this it here, this mercy and this compassion, referring back up to election in verses 11 to 13, this unconditional election back there, I do it on whom I have mercy. I do it on whom I have compassion. Therefore, it depends not on human will, nor on exertion, but on God, who has mercy. Now, here comes the argument, and there are three things I want us to see in this verse, and I'll circle the key words from which we see them. For, so that's where we'll get our first point, for, that's an argument for the conclusion he just saw in verse 16, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, that's significant, Here was Moses, here's Pharaoh. For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Name, very, very significant. So let's take those one at a time. For, Pharaoh, name. For, so this so then here means that this conclusion, it is not of human will. It is not of human exertion, but it is God who decisively decides who will have mercy or who will be chosen. That's an inference. So, so this right here is supporting that quote from Exodus 33, 19 is supporting this inference. And when he says for, this is supporting it as well. So this is a quote from Exodus 9.16. So whether you come at it from the bottom up with the word for or whether you come at it from the top down with an inference, the point is both verse 17 or Exodus 9.16 and verse 15 or Exodus 33.19 are designed to lead to verse 16. It depends this it, going back up here to election and going back to this mercy, it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God. That's the, the fundamental thing. God is free and not dependent on human beings for what he decides to do. So this verse 17 is confirming verse 16, just like verse 15 already did. Here's the second point, Pharaoh. Now we have not a Jewish leader who may be receiving mercy because God wills to give mercy, but we have a Gentile who is raised up, not this time for mercy, but as we will see next time, 
for hardening. We're not going to go there today. And that's significant because earlier, the issue that raised the question of justice or righteousness was that Jacob was chosen and Esau was not. And now we see what Paul is doing. He's developing a double argument because Moses and mercy correspond to Jacob and his election, and Pharaoh and hardening correspond to Esau and his rejection. So he's balancing the argument here to explain how righteousness is holding sway, righteousness is holding sway in Jacob's case and Esau's case as typical of those whom God chooses and does not choose. So that's the point of introducing Pharaoh here because he corresponds to Esau. One last point. For this very purpose I raised you up, Pharaoh, that I might show my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Now, you may not remember, or if you've listened to it, it was a huge issue for me to discover that the way verse 15 works is by going back and noticing that in the context where this is quoted in Exodus 33, 19, Moses asks for God to show him his glory, and God says, I will show you my name, and then he quotes these words, I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll com- have compassion. And I argued that the point there is that this, this freedom of God is of the essence of God's name, and his righteousness is his doing right by his name, that is, by his freedom. And therefore, when he chooses Jacob over Esau freely, he is acting in righteousness. And now, down here, there's a confirmation that Paul is thinking that way because when he gets to to Pharaoh here, he says, I raised up Pharaoh for this very purpose that I might show my power and my name through him. So I I am acting righteously in regard to Pharaoh as I did to Esau and to Jacob in that I am not being governed by human will or exertion. I am maintaining my absolute divine freedom, and I'm being motivated by myself and not by anything else, namely myself to display my power and to display my name. So those are the three big uh, confirmations in verse 17 of what we've seen so far, and we can sum it up like this. Um, God is righteous in unconditional election. That comes from chapter 9, verse 11 through 12 which is expressing God's freedom from all controlling influences outside himself. So his unconditional election expresses his freedom, which is a constituent part or an essential part of God's name or his glory. And that's confirmed here in verse 17. So God is acting for his glory. He is maintaining his freedom in that he's choosing this here and not man, not man's exertion, not man's will. And thus, when he acts in unconditional election of Jacob over Esau, he is righteous.